What's up y'all, Alvin here, and this is everything I use to catch redfish on the fly. I tell the good jokes. <laughs> All right, so I made a whole series of videos on catching redfish on the fly. I'll link that up there. I have a lot of people ask me about specific gear that I use, and this is it. So this is by no means the only thing that'll work or the best gear. This just happens to be what I use. All right, so starting off, first thing is gonna be the rod and my rod of choice is the Orvis Helios 3D in a nine foot, eight weight version. So I've had this rod, I've had several of these rods for a while and I really like them. They're super accurate, really lightweight and I haven't found anything that was better. There's plenty of rods that are just as good, uh, less expensive rods and even more expensive rods but this just happens to be the one that I stick with. Now, um, my wife, actually prefers the nine weight. She thinks it's got a little bit more accuracy, uh, but I don't know, I'm, I'm an eight weight guy, so that's what I go with. Uh, it's a four piece. Um, most of the time, it could be a one piece because most of the time it just goes from the garage to the truck to the boat, and that's kind of where they live, all set up most of the time. But yeah, it is a four piece, and I have traveled with it because it's also a perfect rod for bonefish and a lot of other inshore saltwater species and some of the larger freshwater species. Okay, so next up is my reel and it is a Nautilus NVG 8 slash 9. So this one will work with an eight weight or nine weight. Uh, one of the things I like about Nautilus is they got all these cool colors. Uh, Super smooth, it's got a great drag, and uh, yeah, should last a lifetime. Once again, there's plenty of other reels that'll work. I've got several other reels that I use, but I just like this one probably because of the color, if for no other reason. <laughs> um, I've got an eight weight line on it, and probably close to 200 yards of backing since it is an eight slash nine reel. Um, for the line, next part of the outfit, I've got the eight weight, weight forward, floating Orvis Hydros saltwater. <laughs> and it's just an all around saltwater line. Uh, seems to work fine. I've used lots of different lines. And the reality is nowadays, lines are really good. I don't think I've ever picked up a bad line or used a rod with the line on it. And I thought, this is bad. I can't catch fish on it. So yeah, um, that's what I have on this one. All right, so that's the rod, reel, all that stuff. Moving on down. Now, if you watched any of my other videos, you know, my bass videos, um, you'll probably know that this is what I use for a leader. So anytime I have a pre-tapered leader, I got no problem with using that, I put it on. But a lot of times I just don't have them, so I've got an assortment of spools of tippet material, everything from 60 pound down to 20 pound, and that's how I make my leaders. If you wanna know more about making leaders, I just happen to have another video. I'll link that right there. Um, but yeah, I've got uh, several different spools, and like I said, 20 pound, that is sort of my tippet. That is usually my go-to. Now, if the fish are being spooky, I do have smaller spools of lighter tippet, all the way down to 12 pound, but 12 pound is usually about as low as I go. And I do have the 12 pound in fluorocarbon as well as some 16 pound and some 20 pound. But more often than not, it's gonna be 20 pound. All right, so if I'm tying a leader or if I'm changing flies, gotta have something to cut the line with. And I usually have a couple of different options in the boat with me. So um, you guys have probably seen this Gerber, Defender and the Gerber Freehander. I use this quite a bit, and this is pretty much on my belt at all times, you know, clipper and a retriever. Um, I almost always will have a pair of pliers as well, and there's another pair of Gerber pliers. I'll, I'll throw a link to all this stuff in the description if you wanna know exactly what they are. 
But the thing about redfish a lot of times, even with these pliers, and, and they do have sort of a needle nose, a lot of times they will get hooked and you can't reach them with a nice pair of saltwater pliers. So I always have a pair of hemostats on the boat. So just something that's got a little bit more reach, something that's got a little bit smaller profile so it will actually fit down deep into a redfish's mouth so I can get the flies back. So always got to have those guys. The other thing that uh, is really important, especially in salt water, because a lot of times you'll get rust on the hooks just from using them a couple times. Even if you're careful to let them dry out, a lot of times there's just enough salt water right there where you stick it into the cork, wherever you're storing the fly or you close the box up and there's some salt water in there. So it really helps to have a hook sharpener. Um, I don't even know who makes this sharpener. I've had this thing forever. Um, but if I pull a fly out and it's got some rust on it, then I'll hit it with this guy, knock the rust off, sharpen it up, and I'm good to go. One of the things I like about fly fishing for redfish is it's pretty simple. This is all the gear I need, except of course, we do need some flies. <laughs> um, and I happen to have another video talking about my five favorite redfish flies. I'll link that up there. All right. I want to thank y'all for watching this video once again. I really appreciate it. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. And in the meantime, good luck on the water.